Hi guys, um, so I know it's been a really long time since I made a video, um, I think it's been like three or four weeks, um, but, um, I've just had a lot going on in the past few weeks, um, mentally and physically, and, um, I'm actually going on vacation next week, um, I'm leaving the 20th to go to Florida, we're gonna go to Disney for two days, um, and then we're gonna go to, like, Tampa, Clearwater area for, like, a week and a half, maybe? Like, no, for, like, a week, and then, um, Nashville on the way back for, like, a day or two. Um, so, yeah, um, I will be gone. Um, sort of really nervous, but I'll talk about that later on in the video. Um, I... Let's see, um, a few weeks ago I got a, um, pain, um, procedure done. I'm pretty sure I made videos about this, um, and after the pain procedure was done, I, and this is something that I've had done before, it was nothing new, um, but after I got a really, really bad flare, I don't even know if you can call that because that seems like it's taking it too lightly. It was just terrible. Um, I was in excruciating pain. I was in the emergency room um, and they found out later that I actually had strep, not in my throat, but in my blood, um, streptococcus in my blood and um, it had been there for probably, I would say probably at least two months, if not longer. Um, and that had, um, counteracted the, um, the injections that I had and made it worse. So, um, I had that and then I got on antibiotics. I finished those antibiotics about two, about, a, about two weeks ago. Um, and, um, I'm, I'm still, I thought I was feeling a little bit better and I, I think I was, I think. I had partially kicked it, but, um, ever since, like, about a week ago, a week and a, a week and a half ago, maybe, um, all these dates are relative because I literally can't remember. I've been in these four walls of the house for the past three months, and I'm going stir crazy, so I can't really remember one day the next, um, what happened, um, but, um, I... Um, got another one of the pain procedures done, um, on Saturday, today's Wednesday, um, and ever since then I'm still having serious problems with pain, um, it didn't help at all again, which leaves me, um, to think even more that I have strep still, um, but I am probably right, right now I... Um, I got a refill of my, um, pain meds, so right now I'm doing okay, which is why I'm making a video. Um, I just did some laundry, but I'm going to be paying for it in about an hour when it, um, wears off. Um, I actually was able to clean my room yesterday, and after that, after I, I mean, it was literally 10 minutes of work, um, and I wasn't able to complete it. Um, I just cleaned off the floor a little bit and threw stuff away. Um, but after that, after my, um, pain meds wore off, I was literally in excruciating, overwhelming, like, throwing up type of pain that, um, I couldn't, like, I, I have been, um, on my heating pad, um, under two blankets, um, one of which being just my regular comforter and then the other being my heated blanket on high. Um, and then I've been having to take ice packs and literally ice my the back of my neck and my shoulders and my forearms. I literally cannot touch them because if I do, I am in excruciating pain and I see stars. Um, which is also another symptom for me of strep in my blood. I get terrible body aches everywhere and it... I'm so raw that it hurts to be just to be touched. Um, for me, my right here on both arms, 
are always really sensitive for me, right there and on the back of my arms, are always really sensitive for me. They've always been a really bad trigger point for me, um, as well as my the back of my head right here. I've never gotten headaches, but like there's a place right on the back of my neck um, that you can push on and it actually feels better. Um, but the actual skin, it hurts really, really bad. So I'm having problems, to say the least, with my pain and managing my pain. Um, I've been working with my TENS unit and all, all the stuff that I mentioned beforehand um, to keep it at a manageable rate. Um, I really wanted to try to get in to see a, um, a new PCP, a primary care physician, um, because the one that I have is completely just incompetent and, oh, she's just so frustrating. Um, my mom actually called her office after, um, my antibiotics were done because the ER tells you to follow up with your PCP, um, in a week, you know, to see how you're doing and see if you need any more antibiotics and check your blood and everything. So she called and the nurse was like, yeah, no, she's not, she's not gonna, you, you don't need to bring her in. And my mom was like, um, actually the ER physician told us to have her follow up, um, with the doctor. And they were like, yeah, no, you don't need to, you need to follow up with the, with your pain, um, doctor, because that was the last doctor you saw. Um, n n no, um. Definitely not. It, the strep has absolutely nothing to do with my um, fibromyalgia doctor. Um, it has to do with primary care. Um, you know, cold, flu, strep, ear infection, all that stuff. Not to do with the pain doctor. So we are in the process of looking for a new pain doctor, but I don't think that's going to happen before Florida, which is incredibly scary for me. Um because I don't want to be miserable the entire time. Um, also on that subject of being miserable, I um, have some very exciting news, but I'm not exactly sure if it's exciting or not, because, I don't know, it's just very frustrating for me, because um, when I went in for the pain procedure on Saturday, um, I thought it would probably be a good idea, since we're leaving for Florida, to possibly get a script for a permanent wheelchair and it's if you're if you don't have um chronic pain or anything like that and you see a 21 year old girl asking for a wheelchair um you're gonna think that something fishy is going up on going on honestly um i've been wanting to get a wheelchair for a while not because i enjoy sitting in wheelchairs and having people push me and all that stuff it's not true at all um sorry if you can hear the dogs barking um, the fact is, is that I am so limited on where I can go and what I can do with, um, friends and family because I don't know if my joints are going to be dislocating. I don't know if, you know, maybe the previous night my hips dislocated and putting them back in, um, I pinched a nerve and I can't really feel my legs as well. Um, I don't know if, um, my blood pressure is going to be low, so I can't really stand up for a long period of time without feeling like I'm going to pass out, or my blood pools in my feet, um, and so that also contributes to my feeling of passing out. Just so many different ailments that I have um, put together makes it very hard to know from day to day if I'm going to be able to do this or that. So having a wheelchair to own and be able to say, okay, yeah, you know what? I'm having a crappy day. I had made this previous commitment and you know what? Now I don't have to cancel because even though I'm not feeling that great, um, I can go in my wheelchair and be able to, you know, experience what I wanted to experience with my friends or family. So I called, um, a, I called my insurance company to ask them if there was any places that they recommended me get it from. Um, I went online and I researched and I decided that I wanted, previously I had wanted the Drive Blue Streak. Um, it's a very um, inexpensive wheelchair. It's about $125 um, on like Amazon or ActiveForever.com. And um, 
but after I got the script, I realized that I, since it's going to be paid for by insurance, I'm actually going to get one that fits me and fits my needs. And um, I decided upon the Invicare 9000 XT, which is a customizable wheelchair. Um, it has a adjustable back height, so if I feel like I need to like sit back or a little or something like that, it's adjustable, so I can actually lean back. Another thing is um, it um, actually goes back 10 degrees, so it's nice to be able to, like, even just a little bit lean back um, and take a little bit of the pressure off my back because I am most comfortable when I am laying down. Um, and so I called the insurance company. They gave me one name, and I called them, and they were like, yeah, we don't actually sell wheelchairs. Okay, that's awkward, but whatever. Um, called insurance back. Gave me the, they didn't answer, so I called them back again, and they gave me five, um, no, six more names. So I, total of seven, I called five of them. Either no wheelchairs, or they weren't open, or um, just random stuff. And the last place I called, um, they said yes, they did have wheelchairs, and um, excitedly, yes, they did have the wheelchair that I was looking at, um, and we, you know, I gave them all my information and all that stuff, and they were going to, you know, get it ready and have it to me actually by the next day, which is very exciting, um, which would have been yesterday. And then I got a call back saying, you know what, they don't have um, the wheelchair that I wanted, um, so would I be okay with like a little bit less, you know, um, this, a step down from the one that I wanted. Um, because I was told that the one that I wanted was sort of like a Cadillac of wheelchairs, which I don't know. Um, it was actually really inexpensive compared to some other ones that I saw. I do. Ne I did need it to be lightweight because my shoulders pop out. Those are probably. Um, those are probably some of the worst joints that I have. My shoulders and my hips, um, just locate the worst. And for me, you know, pushing myself, it's very easy for my shoulders to, you know, dislocate. So I needed a lightweight one so that with my body weight and the weight of the wheelchair, I could still push myself. Um, and so they told me that I was going to, um, if I, it was okay, um, I could get the, I think it was the Invicare SX5, um, which was still a lightweight wheelchair, and it would, that would be able to come to me, um, the next day, whereas the, um, Invicare 9000 would be with me, or would come to me in the week. Um, so I was like, yeah, just, um, the sooner the better, you know, I wanted to get used to it before the vacation. So then I got a call back later telling me that, um, she called in my insurance and they said, oh wait, no, she needs, she needs a, um, she needs to be pre-approved. And I said, well, that doesn't make sense because I called three times and none of the times they told me that I needed to be pre-approved for a wheelchair. They should have told me. They they had my information, you know. They had my plan. So, um, but no. So I had to get um, my script that I got written by the doctor and fax it to them, which was actually in my mom's car. So she had to go out when she was at work to her car, fax it, and then, yeah. Just a whole big old ordeal that I thought was going to be done within one phone call to um, the supplier. So now, um, I don't know if I'm actually even going to get it in time. Um, I was told that it's going to be rushed to them and hopefully get it through in time. Um, the supplier um, and the lady that I talked to said that... Um, because I'm a local person to it, the hospital that uh, the supplier is actually located at is like 20 minutes away from me. So, um, she would be able to get it to my house, like, as soon as, like, the day or the day after they got the approved, um, you know, being approved. Um, 
So, but I still, I don't know. Um, insurance companies are notoriously slow. Um, I don't, I, now I've gone from being really excited and ha knowing that I'm going to have a wheelchair and not having to be, you know, miserable and not having to limit myself or cost my mom, you know, money to actually run a wheelchair um, to not even knowing if I'm going to be able to get a wheelchair in time for vacation. So that is um, what's been going on with me um, medically. Um, sorry, this video is going to be pretty long. If you are just interested in the medical part, um, you know, you can stop watching now pretty much. Uh, for me mentally, I had a really hard time last night. I was on Tumblr um, until about 3 o'clock. Um, I've had a really hard time sleeping lately because of the pain, but um, I've been on Tumblr usually at night and or watching YouTube videos or something like that. Um, but I realized that I... Um, I've been having a really good time with my therapist. Um, we've really meshed. Um, her, she's helping me when I leave the appointments. I st like for the entire rest of the day. I feel good and um, almost confident about myself, and you know, good about where everything's going. But then the next day, I'm back to my you know eating disorder behaviors and depression and. Um, self-harm, you know, triggers and everything like that. So, I uh, I've been trying I'm I'm going to not I'm not going to cry. Um I've been trying to um uh, recover by myself and I've been trying to do that for a while and I don't think I really admitted to myself that I that's what I was trying to do. Um but I realized I went on um really stupidly I went on um the Timberline Knowles tag on Tumblr and um, was reading about how, you know, everyone was doing and, you know, people able to go there and people leaving and all these s things that people were writing about it and I just like broke down crying and realized that I still need to go there and my therapist is amazing and she's, she's still you know, she checks up on me, do you still want to go to TK, um, what can I do to help you get there, is there anything that I can do um, to hold you, you know, to keep you stable until you actually go. Um, she's very, very supportive with me going. Um, I just, am, I guess I didn't realize how much I actually still needed it. Um, for a long time, I sort of just, you know, put it in the back of my mind because I didn't want to get hurt again. Um, sorry if this is really incoherent video, I just, or if I like skip over words. Um, I'm having a really hard time with aphasia and fibro fog and getting my brain together. <sighs> I don't know, I'm just, I'm at a crossroads right now and I don't know if I want recovery and I don't know if I can do recovery and I don't know if, um, you know, what it's going to take for me to, to get better. Um, I, uh, ugh, I don't, for the longest time I was able to say, yeah, I want to get better. But right now sitting here and realizing that I, um, I just weighed myself yesterday, and I just gained another two pounds, and you can, like, looking at the screen, and what, what I can see is I've gained weight here and here, and I'm not even showing you guys my stomach because it's disgusting, and I've gained weight here, and my hands, and my neck, and just, I hate myself, and I hate my body, and I hate my, you know, I hate my body for everything that it's done for, done to me, and I don't know if part of it, part of my eating disorder is um, just wanting it to listen to me and wanting to be able to control it, but also wanting to punish it for everything that it's done to me um, in the past 21 years. Um, 
if you ask my parents right now, or anyone, or my siblings, or anyone that's, you know, around me when I eat, they would think that I'm actually doing well, and, you know, I'm eating, you know, I just, I had popcorn, and I'm, I'm drinking regular pop, and I'm, you know, eating regular food, but, um, they don't know that when I'm eating, I'm only eating because I need to take my, um, pain meds, because if I, for my specific pain meds that I have, if I don't eat beforehand, I am seriously, seriously sick, and, um, I, um, tend to actually throw up, even if I don't have anything in my stomach, um, when I take my meds, if I'm taking them without food. So the only reason that I'm ever eating is, you know, the only time that I'm ever eating is when I'm about to take meds or if I have taken meds already. And, you know, the people in my house don't see that and they don't, you know, put two and two together um, because, you know, they don't know what, exactly when I'm taking my meds and what I'm, when I'm eating and, you know, how it correlates. So... I don't think they think that I need it anymore. I don't think that they realize that I still am not right in the head and that I still am restricting. And um, just so you guys know, trigger warning for the next thing that I'm going to say. Um, I've been only eating things that are under 300 calories um, only when I take my meds. Um, and I purposely eat now in front of my family because I want them to see that I'm eating so that they don't think that I'm still sick and it's stupid because it'd be easier for me to show them that I am still sick so that they don't question me when I say that I still need to go to TK but I'm just an idiot and I suck and I'm terrible and I just I don't even know I just I hate myself and I hate my body and I hate everything about my life right now when it comes to my body and myself. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for watching and thank you guys who are from Tumblr who helped me through it, everything last night. Um, and thank you for your advice and everything. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to um, message me or anything like that, you can do so on Tum or on YouTube or on Tumblr or on Twitter. Um, I have all three of those, um, and I will put the links to those down in the um, description box. Um, I will hopefully make another video um, before I leave. I don't know though, but I am going to be vlogging when I'm there. Um, so that'll be fun. I'll probably be able to edit stuff while I'm there, um, or if not, when I get home and make a compilation of different videos of where I'm going to be. So that'll be fun at least. I hope I have my wheelchair by then. Um, like I said, if you guys want to, um, want daily updates on how I'm doing and what I'm dealing with during the day, um, I would suggest following my Tumblr because I'm on there pretty much 24-7. Um... Yeah, thank you guys for watching, and thank you for listening to my random rant and update. And Yeah, thank you for subscribing, hopefully, and giving me a thumbs up, um, and I will talk to you guys later. Thanks. Bye.